what is going on my fellow warriors Evelyn here hope you're all having a wonderful day today so guys the patch is literally just right around the corner so i'm here today to talk about all the changes that are happening for warriors in patch 7 2.5 we're gonna go through all of the changes fury and protection force mostly because there's only three changes to fury and four changes to protection whereas arms has 35 changes which i think is pretty insane has kind of changed our playstyle quite a bit so i'm going to get into them a little bit later but we're going to go with fury and protection first Okay, so with that being said, let's get into the change for Warriors. We're going to start with Fury first. First change to Fury was all damage is increased by 5%. Now, while I feel like this is more of a PvE change as it currently stands in PvP, Fury is doing quite a lot of damage, so I don't think it was needed there. But maybe in PvE, Fury was doing slacking behind on the other classes, so maybe this kind of puts it in line, I guess. The next change was to Frenzy. Frenzy now lasts for 15 seconds, was 10 seconds. So maybe in PvP you find yourself a situation where you CC for more than 10 seconds in a Rue or maybe a Cyclone and this will allow you to keep the stacks up and effectively stay on the target. Next one was to Juggernaut the Artifact trait, now lasts for 8 seconds, was 6 and Juggernaut can now be activated by your offhand when it kills a target. So that's pretty awesome I think and the fact that it lasts 8 seconds means that you're not going to have so much a problem keeping the stacks on. Okay, so next up we have is a protection change, the first change is to ignore pain. The absorb amount of ignore pain has been increased by 20%. Now, I feel like this is borderline bringing it back to the days of when tanks were doing stupid shit. Like, right now as it currently stands, blood decays are almost unkillable. Guardian Druids have insane amounts of AoE damage, and Prop Paladins are able to heal 3 weeks for arenas. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, ignore pain, definitely another one borderline pushing Prop Warriors not being able to kill again. So this is definitely a PvE change, but definitely going to affect PvP. Next one is Indomitable, maximum health increased by 20%, was 25%, and maximum effective ignore pain was 25%, now it's 20%. So yeah, I feel like this is probably why they made the ignore pain do more absorb for maximum for this, but obviously you can spec for your talent and maybe change it a bit. Revenge, damage has been reduced by 12%, so I think they did this because Prop was doing way too much AoE damage as it currently stands, so maybe this is just even it out a little bit. Shield block now we only extended three times maximum during its base duration. Probably more of a PvE change. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into the good part. Oh baby, <laughs> the arms changes. So we're gonna start off with the first change was to all arms damage has been increased by 10% in addition to any of the damage changes below. So keep in mind when I say 20%, it's gonna be 30% basically. So the next change was to auto attack rate generation has been increased by 10%. But Krigger Strike Auto Attacks only generate 30% instead of 50% bonus rage. I've been testing this out a bit and I feel like I feel like it's still pretty similar to where it was before. It just means we're gonna get less rage when we pop our battle cry than we would have before. So maybe this is a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing. We'll see, only time will tell. The effect of mastery has now been reduced by 20%. Now I feel like this is to come in line with the fact that all of our abilities have been increased by 10%. I've been testing it on the damage isn't too much. In fact, I think we're doing more damage than we were before. Next change is the anger management. Now spends 20 rage per one second of the cooldown reduction. Was 10 rage per one second, but now also reduced the cooldown of blade storm. So basically, it's nerfed by 100%. But the fact that it reduced the cooldown of blade storm is kind of intriguing because if you spec for your talent in the PP talent, which made it a woman of cooldown, and then kind of like. Went for anger management, I could see yourself having like a 40 to 30 second blade storm, which does sound pretty insane. Uh, whether you're great for rings is beyond me, maybe getting out of roots and that would be a good idea. Cleave damage has been increased by 20%, definitely a PvE change because no one's going to use cleave in PvP. Uh, maybe it might be worthwhile, I don't know, maybe maybe an RBGs or stuff like that, but yeah, we'll see. Next change is the Colossus Smash. It's been reduced to 20 seconds, was 30 seconds, and its damage has been increased by 10%. So that's a 20% increased damage. Seems pretty freaking nice if you ask me. A lot of time class smash button proc, so this is definitely a plus. Dauntless now has a reduction of 10%, was 20% for rage. So I feel like there's a lot of things that are happening right now with warriors. The rage has been kind of taken away from us. So it's going to become a problem. That's why they made the rage change at the top. Next change the deadly cam, now only reduces the rage cost by 75% instead of 100. Another thing that's kind of affecting our rage, execute damage has been increased by 25%, so that's 35. And if the target does not die, 30% of the rage is now refunded. So that's kind of another rage thing as well. Next change has been to fear for battle. Fear for battle has gone up to 80% increased damage, was 45% damage, 
and it's also been moved to the level 75 tier which is on the same tier as Mortal Combo and Titanic Might. Now while this sounds pretty pretty nice I really feel like Mortal Combo or Titanic Might is definitely going to be a better choice damage wise because slam damage has also been changed which I'll get into in a moment. Okay, so next change to focus rage has been moved down to level 90 tier and now costs 20 rage instead of 15 therefore giving us more rage problems again now while it does seem nice that you can use this and have mortal combo or titanic might it's going to be a problem with rage and as well as that the next talent which is in for the kill which i'll talk about in a second is going to fix problems with the rage as well as damage and all that other stuff so i feel like this is an unusable talent and the reason why because in for the kill has also been moved to level 90 tier but now passively cause cross smash grant you 10 percent haste for eight seconds so this is really 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 nice because 10 percent haste puts us up to 37 percent haste allowing us to do two more strikes in our battle cry window which is a lot of damage when you ask me especially combined with charity defenses which is definitely going to give us pretty heavy burst damage and infinite kill also gives us more swings quicker so more swings equals more rage equals more damage so yeah definitely infinite kill is definitely going to be about the choice here. More strike damage has been increased by 20%, so that's quite a lot as well. So that's a 30% increased damage. This is definitely going to be pretty awesome tied in with your sweeping strikes, definitely doing a lot more damage against melee cleaves. Okay, so the next change has been to opportunity strikes. Opportunity strikes now cause your extra attacks to generate 5 rage, which is definitely going to help with our rage problem. And it has a 0.5 internal cooldown. So that's pretty, pretty nice if you ask me. Next change is to overpower. Overpower now costs no rage, but no longer proc from your auto attacks. It may not proc itself, so that's pretty sucky. But it means that your, your special attacks like more strike and all that will proc it. So whether it'll still be pretty good, I'll have to test that out. Precise strikes, artifact trait now cause your closer smash, increase the quicker strike chance of your next more strike and execute by 10% per rank. Now while those styles sound really nice, the fact that you could probably get like a 92% crit chance on execute and a 68% chance on your mortal strike. At the same time it nerfs the fact that we had a rage reduce with it before. It used to reduce the cost on more strike and execute by 60% rage. So that's going to be another thing that's going to affect our rage. So as you can see there's quite a lot of things that are affecting our rage at this point. So I'm going to get a bit concerned about the rage but we'll see how it goes. Ravager now generates 7 rage per tick. As if it hits one, at least one enemy and for a maximum of 49 rage over its duration so maybe this could be a new choice to go for in arenas <laughs> maybe not ravager's never been really that great maybe it was a worth it for the rage generation maybe if you catch him a nice storm bolt into a ravager pop cooldowns i uh, know we'll see okay so all the next changes are to rend rend has had quite a lot of changes so the first change to rend was it now costs 30 rage instead of 10 its initial hit only does 150% weapon damage was 208, so that's definitely a nerf. But the plus side is that they reduce it to 8 seconds and then it does damage every 2 seconds instead of every 3. So definitely makes it a bit more of a bursty kind of dot, which is really, really nice. They've also increased the periodic damage of the dot, 2.5 attack power instead of 2.4, which makes it do a bit, definitely more damage. So it's going to be pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so next change is to the artifact trade charge defenses. Now causes Cloth Smash to increase the damage of your next more strike execute by 60% was 30% but this effect no longer increased the critical strike chance of your more strike execute. Pretty much all this did was it made it so you don't have to crit to get the 60% increased damage. So I feel like that's pretty pretty nice. Next change was to Slam. Slam has a 35% increased damage. So this is one of the reasons why you wouldn't go Whirlwind now for the Fearful Battle which isn't really needed if you ask me it's more of an rbg like i said so definitely a really awesome change okay so the next change is to titanic might increase the duration of cost smash by eight seconds was 16 seconds and now reduce the cooldown of cost smash by eight seconds the fact that it was reduced to 20 seconds and now you got another eight seconds off that's 12 second cooldown on cost smash which is really really nice going allowing us to get more of our shard defenses procs increasing that more strike damage it's also going to allow us to do a lot of other things like the fact that if we combine it with in for the kill it's going to allow us to get a lot more haste a lot more rage because of the in for the kill and also the fact that we have a four second more strike is going to allow battle cry to be opened up twice we're going to be able to use more strike twice in our battle cry window therefore effectively doing our burst really really nice and i'll explain that in another video next change has been to trauma trauma has been moved to level 45 tier but now can also be activated by execute 
So this sounds pretty, pretty okay. I mean, the fact that it does damage based on your execute damage. If you execute a target with around two tower three targets with your sweeping strikes up, let's say an RBG or something like that, that's a lot of AOE damage, man, if you ask me. Uh, still doesn't do an awful lot of damage itself, though, so they need to increase the damage of the ability, if you ask me. But it's still pretty, pretty okay. Speaking of AOE, though, Void Cleave, the artifact trait, has had its damage increased by 100%, so maybe this might warrant using Cleave a bit more. We'll see. I'll have to test that out as well. <laughs> There's been quite a lot of things I'll have to test out. Next change is to Whirlwind. Whirlwind damage has been increased 90% per weapon damage hit. But I've actually tested this on a single target, and it actually doesn't increase its damage on a single target, so I'm guessing it only increases damage every target you hit. And now it costs 3 rage, was 25 rage. So definitely worthwhile using when there's multiple targets around but when there's only one target definitely not worth using slam is definitely the better choice here of the two choices so yeah i like all of the changes that they've done to warriors and i feel like there's definitely going to be kind of a playstyle change with warriors the rotation is going to change a few things are definitely going to change i've already actually figured out an aoe rotation a single target rotation for arms warriors and the spec we should go for we're going to release that in a different video because this video is already way too long but anyways guys that's all the change to Warriors. I feel like Arms is still going to do pretty well after all the changes that they've done. We're probably going to be performing better, but the thing is, there's going to be more chances that we're going to be peeled more on our burst. So maybe you might want to use Rexes when you feel like you can lock a target down or something like that and all that good stuff. But anyways, guys, as for the Fury changes, Fury, don't see much change to Fury. Like Even though the small few changes, it's not really going to change too much. And as for Prop, maybe it's going to break Prop PvP. <laughs> Who knows? Anyways guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned anything from this video, I really would appreciate a big fat thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button. Anyways guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, this is Evan out. I love you all. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.